Hello guys, in this video, we will be discussing about finding the limit of algebraic functions like polynomial, rational, or radical functions using the limit theorem. Now for example, if we have here the limit of 5x minus 11 as our x approaches to 3 we have now the limit of a linear function 5x minus 11 so substitu substituting x with 3 so this is now equal to 5 times 3 minus 11 so this is now equal to 15 minus 11, which is equal to 4. 4 is our limit value. Another example, if we have here the limit of an identity function x as x approaches to 3, this is just equal to 3. Okay, according to the limit of identity function, your limit value is the number where your x values approach with. So you have another example, limit of negative 5. As x approaches to 3, our limit value here is negative 5. Since limit of a constant is a constant, according to the limit theorem, given a constant. Another example, assuming we have here x squared plus 5x plus 6 over x plus 3 where x approaches to negative 3. As you notice, our function here is a rational function. If you, were, if you will directly substitute your x with negative 3, your denominator will become 0. And we have to avoid that because that is undefined. So first thing to do is that we have to look at the numerator and employ the process of factorization. Our denominator is already in its base form, meaning to say this is not factorable anymore. So from here, we are going to factor out the numerator, but again, we have to copy the limit. Always stress the importance of the word limit. And then factoring the numerator, this is x plus 2 times x plus 3 over copying x plus 3 as our x approaches to negative 3. So from this, we have this kind of format. And all we have to do is to cancel similar, ter similar function. Now continuation, this will become limit of x plus 2 as our x approaches to negative 3. So this is now limit of linear function. All we have to do is to substitute our x with negative 3. So if you will be substituting x with negative 3, you will not be writing limit word anymore. So this is now negative 3 plus 2, which is equal to negative 1. Negative 1 is our limit value. Another example, if you have here the limit of square root of x minus 1 over x minus 1 as x approaches to 1. Our function here is a rational function. 
wherein the numerator part is having a radical expression. Now, if you will substitute x with 1 directly, square root of 1 is 1 minus 1, that is 0. And our denominator is 1 minus 1, which is also 0, and that is indeterminate. So we have to avoid 0 over 0 because that is indeterminate. Now, all we have to do here is that we are going to rationalize. Rationalizing the numerator to make it to avoid um, instance that our numerator and denominator will become 0. So we have to multiply with the square root of x plus 1 over the square root of x plus 1. So multiplying the numerator with square root of x plus 1 and also multiply on the denominator part to maintain the originality of the function. Anyway, square root of x plus 1 over square root of x plus 1 is the, just 1. So 1 times this, we will be going back with our original function. So this is now rationalizing the numerator by copying, by multiplying square root of x plus 1 over square root of x plus 1. This point, copy the limit. If you are going to multiply the numerator using the FOIL method, this is now square root of x minus 1 times the square root of x plus 1. Square root of x times square root of x, that is square root of x raised to the power of 2. Square root of x times 1, that is plus square root of x. Negative 1 times square root of x is negative square root of x. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. But you can cancel this because this is 0 and canceling square root and the 2. So what's left will be x minus 1. This is now our simplification, our product from the numerator part. So all you have to do is to write here x minus 1. And in terms of the denominator, x minus 1 times square root of x plus 1, do not simplify, just copy. Okay, the reason why we are just going to copy the denominator, it's because we have to cancel the x minus 1 as our x approaches to 1. So what remains from the numerator is understandable that we have 1. So we have here 1 over the square root of x plus 1 as our x approaches to 1. So you can give limit to the numerator and give limit to the denominator. So this is now the limit of 1 as x approaches to 1 all over the limit of the square root of x plus 1 as x approaches to 1. So from here, we can now use um, the limit of a constant as x approaches to 1. Okay, so the limit of a constant is just 1 over limit of square root of x plus 1. You can directly substitute x with 1. Or if you want, you can give limit to the first term and give limit to the second term. So limit of square root of x plus 1, square root of 1 plus 1. So we have your square root of 1 plus 1. And here, what is square root of 1? This is 1 plus 1. 1 half is the answer. Another example. If we have here x squared minus 1 over square root of x minus 1. At this point, if you will directly substitute x with 1, the numerator will become 0 and the denominator will also be 0 and that is indeterminate. So from here, we have to rationalize. Rationalizing our denominator, so this is now 
multiplying with square root of x plus 1, also multiply on the denominator part. So this is now the limit. Your numerator just copy we have here, x squared minus 1 times the square root of x plus 1. In terms of the denominator, square root of x minus 1 times square root of x plus 1 using the FOIL method, okay, will give a result of x minus 1, as shown from the computation a while ago, as our x approaches to 1. But what is x squared minus 1? This is factorable. This is difference of two squares. So the factors would be the limit of x minus 1 times x plus 1 times, copy, square root of x plus 1 over the denominator part, x minus 1, as x approaches to 1. You can now cancel x minus 1. At this point, what's left will be the limit of x plus 1 times square root of x plus 1 as x approaches to 1. Now from here you can give limit to the first function and limit to the second function because this is limit of the product. So we have here the limit of x plus 1 as x approaches to 1 times the limit of the square root of x plus 1. Okay. That is the square root of x plus 1 as x approaches to 1. Now, finding the limit, we can actually um, use the upper portion. So, continuation will be here on the upper. So, the limit of a linear is at just 1 plus 1 so we will not we will not be writing limit word anymore substituting x with 1 times substituting x with 1 also we, we have here square root of 1 plus 1 which is now equal to 2 times 2 which is having a limit value of 4 so that is all about finding the limit using limit theorem, which will be applied to algebraic functions like polynomial, rational, or even radical functions. Thank you for watching.